Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the JotoCast, your Star Wars gaming podcast. This is episode 92. My name is Evan Lewis. I am, of course, joined by Leo Andre. Of course. Of course. Who else would I possibly do this with? I don't know. I, it's a good I don't know. It's, it's as if there's another name that should come up, but at the moment, I, I just can't think of who that would be. I can't think of anyone else nope. worth doing this show with. Nope. Nope. Nobody else. Al- although, I would say, if I was going to do it with anybody, I would do it with... Wait. What? No. That's that's not how this one, I want this to start. But, patrons! Patrons are who I would want to do this. That still doesn't work. Patrons are great! The people who have visited and given their time and talents and appreciation over at patreon.com slash the JotoCast are still the greatest people on the face of the earth. We thank them so much for all they do. They make it possible for us to do this and more. And if you'd like information about that, head on over to patreon.com slash the JotoCast, which you can also get to via jodocast.com where you can find links to all of our other social media stuff and you can probably hear my cats in the background right now thanks a lot cats you're the best i can't hear it so i think we're good terrific and oh now i'm getting the stank eye from one of them Ugh. kitty cover that up and oh while you're at jodocast.com you can also find a link to our so, wait 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 what, what, are we what? talking about your cat's butthole here now i mean no, not the butthole. The stuff that comes out of the butthole. He doesn't cover it up in the box. He just lets it sit there. <laughs> Sorry, I thought that that was like a term for when you said you were getting the stank eye from him. Oh, yeah, no, not that part. He, I thought that I thought that was like a new way of saying that the cat was showing you his butthole. No, no, no. Although, I mean, that would be pretty appropriate, but it's literally just the stink eye, you know, just like it sounds from him. Because he's a jerk. Now it sounds like an episode of Magic Tavern talking about buttholes. But yes, Discord server. Go there. We're, we love to talk, talk about buttholes. To talk about buttholes. We have a whole channel dedicated to that starting now. Nope. To talk about wampa holes. Yeah, ye, ye old wampa hole. Maybe we should make that a, a channel. See what happens. Well, Joe makes channels for everything else on the server, <laughs> so why not? <laughs> that's very true. That's a very good point. So, if, if hey, if that's your favorite part of Star Wars, come on over. If you want to talk about other things like games and Star Wars and non-Star Wars games, you can do that too. Just come on down to the old JotoCast Discord and we'll talk with you. Anytime mm. you want. Sounds like an ad for Motel 6 <laughs> that you're going to tell them that we're going to leave the light on for him. Well, if if we could... You know what? I bet we could get Tom Baudet to come. Is it Baudet? Baudet? Tom Baudet to come on? Baudet. Baudet. I mean, he's... At least that's how he always pronounced it on those old commercials. I think that's how they say it like when he's a guest on Wait, Wait. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. He doesn't do much else besides that, so... I'm sure we could get him. I have no doubt. We should reach out to him. That's not gonna. Maybe happen. he's listening already. It could be. Well, you know, he should. Uh, he should hop on. Thinking to himself, "Yes, this is this is my chance. <laughs> the finally. day I've been waiting for. We can only hope." But yes, thank you to everyone who listens. Thank you to the patrons. Thank you, everyone else. And now, let's talk about what we've been playing, if anything. So. Uh, let's see. What have I played since the last time? Uh, um, Destiny, and you kicked everyone's butts, right? Uh, no. No? I thought you did. I thought that was kind of your thing these days, was whooping people. Not in Destiny. I'm terrible at Destiny. Oh, no, okay. I think I had another league game of Legion, though. I won that one. Okay. So there's that, at least. Yeah, that's becoming a regular occurrence for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think I've actually only lost one game of Legion at our local store. So that's that's cool. Hmm. That is pretty awesome. So either I'm just that good or We're gonna go with that. I'm just that good. I think that's more than reasonable. But I've got 
I do have tomorrow, I've got an X-Wing League that I'm going to be participating in. Hmm. What are you going to be running? And, um, Probably some form of TIE Swarm. I've won't... The only conversion kit I've bought thus far has been the Imperial conversion kit. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. Like I've seen I've seen some lists with uh oh what are they called? The the Punisher that's have surprisingly done well. But I don't know if I'm in the mood for flying that, so I'm just gonna probably go with like a six tie swarm. That's that's the max number of ties I have all the bits and bobs for, so mm-hmm. so that's that's probably my plan. I don't expect it to do terribly well at least. And we'll see here after after this first game I might I might take the time to get in uh might try out like the Punisher or something like that. That's the nice thing about it being a, a several week long league is it's you can do lots of experimentation with various different builds mm. and ships and mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I I still have not taken the plunge into getting any X Wing second edition stuff. Although my again, my store still has lots of first edition stuff on sale, so yeah, my store marked down a bunch of their, like, all their first edition stuff. Well, actually, they marked down all their second edition stuff just because, sadly, X-Wing is kind of a dead dead game in our town. Yeah, um, you've mentioned that one of the last couple times. That It just seems so odd that of all the games to, to die down, it's that one. Well, I mean, Armada... And Imperial Assault have both mostly died down in the town, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, Armada never really picked up real huge in my area. Um, But, I mean, it did okay. Like, we would still get stuff, events and stuff, I think partially because the... Uh, at least I believe it was the 2016 world champ, or maybe it was the 2017 world champ is actually from Fergus Falls, hmm. I think. So he would, he would actually come and play at events in Fargo fairly often. But yeah, those days are over and done with huh. for the most part. Well, that stinks. So it's pretty much just, um... Honestly, Legion and Destiny, and now this new X-Wing League, this is going to be some of the first X-Wing that's going to have really been played much around town in a while now, so. Hmm. So I guess this sort of came up in one of the last episodes where we discussed our uh, communities, but has Legion become a a pretty big thing, or is it just big in comparison to X-Wing in your area? Like, um, I would say it's just big in comparison to X Wing. Mm. I mean, at least I mean, and the other thing is, is it's just like at least half of the guys who are going to be coming to play that I know of that are going to be there playing X Wing are also playing Legion. So mm-hmm. um, it's kind of a game split. I know there's like one guy who's he's actually coming all the way from Fergus Falls uh, just because he can't. Like, he, like, I was talking to him, he, like, had stopped playing, he's getting back in the game now, but there's no, like, local community for him to play in, so he's gonna be driving all the way up here from Fergus Falls. Hmm. I mean, at least people are willing to drive for it. Yeah. No, I think, I think X, I think, like, Winnipeg still has a fairly active x-wing community but i think that's about the closest to us that oh, there's wow, really really much of anything hmm. going on damn well that's certainly more activity than i've seen lately i i have not really played much of 
anything. I have not done any Battlefront since they did some updates, although I, I think I will be uh, playing some of that here in a couple weeks. In fact, maybe while we're thinking it, or while I'm thinking about it, we should uh, take some time to talk about more now that we've put some more thought into it about what people can expect on Extra Life. We should at least mention it every episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should. Let's let's pull up the old uh, schedule really quick. This this isn't necessarily gonna be, you know, written in stone. We're gonna we might make changes, but just some of the the things that people can expect of when extra life starts. Sorry. Oh, uh, I was gonna say, what can people expect? Probably drunkenness. <laughs> Well, I mean, we're at least, we're starting at, least, at six at in the morning the, central time. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't. That seems early. That might change. I don't know if I'm gonna be up at six in the morning on a Saturday. <laughs> well, I mean, that does give I mean, us most of a day. You know, I don't know. Your your schedule looks. I don't know. I I think we're gonna we might have to make some adjustments to the schedule. But that's just me. But some of the things that when people tune into us and, you know, times are malleable right now, but Saturday through Sunday, uh, the second and third, am I correct in that? Uh, I think it's, isn't that the third and fourth, actually, oh, I believe? Now I have to pull up a calendar, too. Oh, my yeah, gosh. Saturday is Saturday is the third. Okay, yes. Yeah. So from the third to the fourth of November is Extra Life. And some of the things you can expect will be us just yakking for a while, but then some Battlefront 2 streaming probably with uh, me and Joe. That's the other person, by the way, in case you'd forgotten his name. Remember his name. And then uh, some Lego Star Wars, maybe. And uh, Joe's got a whole library of one-off rando Star Wars board games that he inflicts on people at different times. Uh, we might be doing some Star Wars RPG, which is what I'm looking forward to most of all. Uh, maybe one or two sessions of Clumsy and Random, depending on how that all works out. Uh, we might be doing some... Uh, I'm I'm still not sure what to call this. If it's a painting competition or if it's just like an Iron Chef like pseudo competition with some wackiness thrown in. <laughs> um, man, I really hope we get someone to be the chairman. Then, if it's gonna be like Iron <laughs> Chef, uh, if if we don't, I will be very disappointed. Me <laughs> if memory serves. The color red is used in lots of painting. <laughs> Your chairman sounds kind of like George Takei. Well, yeah, the, the you know the original chairman, not Iron Chef America. Although he's pretty yeah, great in his own right. I I like him. I like him in other shows he's been in. I did not care for him as the chairman, though. All right, fair enough. And we might have some Legion play, some Destiny, some X-Wing, so basically all the things you would expect us to do. But those are the things that we have planned at this time. Uh, things could change, times could change, maybe we won't start at uh, 0600 CST. But just remember, everything that we do is that much earlier for Joe, <laughs> so <laughs> I can't really say, ooh, 7 a.m., I don't want to do that, like... All he has to do is be like, hey, it's 4 a.m. here. Shut up. I'll say it. Well, I know. I know you will. So, yeah. So, Extra Life, folks. And, uh, you know, you, you could donate to... Uh, I mean, you, if you donate to our, our drive, it's to the team. But, uh, explain a little bit, Leo, because you've put more time into this than i have what's the deal with the team versus the individuals how does that all work well it's just i don't know it's uh me neither that's why i'm asking <laughs> it's basically so so anything anybody donates to any one person 
on our team, which would be me, you, or Joe, um, gets put towards the team goal. Um, but there's, but you can't just straight up donate to the Jotocast team. It only lets you donate to a individual member of that team rather than the team as a whole, which I don't know, seems kind of weird to me, but I guess it's so you can have competition amongst your own team for who can get the most donations or whatever. So, I mean, I guess that makes sense. But All right. So, there you have it. You A letter opener. A what? Sorry. You said there you have it, and I said a letter opener. Yes. Sure. Okay. It's, I... it's from the Mystery, Sci- Mystery Science Theater 3000, the movie. Oh, okay. There's a part where a guy says, well, there you have it, and he throws a letter opener onto his desk at the same time as he's and so like that's what they say they're like well there you have it a letter opener it's funnier if you see the movie i'll take your word for it have you seen the movie i feel like i must have but no Ah, man you you should fix that well all right then and really consider going to see that movie or well, not going to see it, but just you know, seeing it. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. It just made up for my lack of game playing by talking about Extra Life. I think that was uh, pretty well played on my part, if I do say so myself. So yeah, I haven't played anything. I've been painting and gluing and busy with other things that are much less fun than gaming. So. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. If you're still like how your painting's been going. Uh, painting's been going well. I'm learning a lot, which means, you know, tiny little mess-ups here and there, like realizing that, oh wait, painting individual pieces of a guy is much easier than gluing it all together and then trying to paint it. It depends. Like, are you talking with Legion? Specifically, yes. Because, I mean, for me anyways, it kind of depends on the guy. Like, and also it all depends on, like, how far you want to go. Like, generally what, I would, what I've been doing is I just dry fit the guys together, mm-hmm. prime them, and then, and then I do my base coat, and I haven't glued them together yet. So they're... Um, that way, if I need to, I can, you know, pop the arms off or whatever to get at their chest. Yeah. Um, well, that's what I failed to do. I was just like, all right, let's slap these guys together. And then- but, I mean, it's it's honestly, though, it's not that big a deal if you don't do it. And I don't, like I said, I only do it for the base coat. Once the base coat is down, I glue them together before I do any shading or highlighting or anything like that. Right, and I, I think... Well, I mean, maybe this is me just not having put in enough time, but as far as, like, getting an idea of how I want it to look and just having, an, you know, that visualization of the character is so much easier when it's together. I'm like, okay, I know exactly how I want this guy to go. But, I don't know. I guess I got so used to doing the Imperial Assault ones where they're just together. You know, there's no assembly required that it didn't even cross my mind to not slap them together first before doing anything with it. And now I'm just like, well, damn it, that would have been smart. Why didn't I do that? I've honestly, like, like I said, I've done both. I've been, I've been happy with my results either way. So I don't think it's really that big of a deal myself. Yeah. I'm sure it's not too bad. It, you know, I, I might try that when I get uh, another box of guys or another core set just to see how it goes. I was also just in a hurry to start playing, but I haven't gotten to do that either. I'll probably wind up doing some, like, you know, games against myself to learn it. But since my play space is also my paint space, it's kind of like pick one or the other right now. And then I got to 
move all my paint stuff, set up my play spot, or if I want to start painting again, that's all that, so, yeah, I don't know, we'll see. I haven't even gotten to RPG lately, so that shows just how little time I've had for gaming with other people. Well, jeez, man. Yeah, I mean, we had been we had been going like every single week for a couple of months straight, it seems like, and then you know stuff started happening, people were busy, and then just like, well. Not this week, and then it was, well, not this week, too. What can you do? That's basically the life cycle of all role-playing groups. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh, so that, that just means we succeeded, right? We're a real group now. Although I did, uh, I did find some use for a bunch of uh, two la- bases that were too large that I bought on accident, thinking, "Oh, these will be great uh, for D and D guys without decent bases," and I just used them as painting stands. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, I I feel like I'm having all these great revelations about how to reuse and recycle things for use in uh, in painting. I'm like, no. Someone else had to have done this first. Don't don't get a get a big head over pseudo creativity. So, what do you mean when you say painting stands? Like you actually like okay. So these are thirty millimeter uh, on, bases, like you... and I use uh, the uh, poster putty, like a big wad of it, and then stick a piece of a of a guy. Like if it's a multi piece figure, I can stick them all onto these. Uh, 30 millimeter bases with a big wad of putty and then I have a uh, an old pill bottle that I use as my stand I can just grab each of these things by the by the base by the 30 millimeter base and just put them on the, the little pill bottle stand as I need to sounds cool yeah it works out pretty well but like I said like someone else must have thought about this just like using the remnants of the Star Wars the card game box as my uh, spray box and uh, spray stands, the the inside cardboard you know divider is actually a really good double set of spraying stands. Really, I just want to spend all my time painting. That's that's the moral of this story. Don't we all? Yeah, and. Uh, some of the things that uh, I hope to see painted in the future. That was a bad attempt at a segue, but we do what we can here at the Jotocast, thanks to our patrons, patreon.com slash the Jotocast. And those things might be some future ships for X-Wing, specifically those that we've seen on the first few episodes of the new animated series, Star Wars Resistance, which... This episode isn't going to be a big review of the series or anything like that. We haven't done that in a while where we've given like a a big, uh, uh, you know, overall review of something besides to just say, yeah, it was it was cool. Hooray. Move on. But uh, I mean, we certainly have some feelings on the series itself and we're only three episodes in. But I th- I think we can say that, uh, as it's been said before, this will certainly be a good source of new ships for X-Wing, particularly in the uh, Resistance and First Order factions, since in First Edition, all we really had for those were X-Wing variants, well, one X-Wing variant, a tie variant. Well, I guess two tie variants, kind of. I guess the special forces one counts as a second variant. But what th- you know, we'll finally start to see more for those two factions. Unless there's more that I'm forgetting. I guess what Kylo's tie, whatever it was, shadow. Is that what it was? I don't remember, honestly. Yeah, I don't either. (laughs) That's why I'm asking you. Uh, But yeah, I mean, it's we can easily say there was not a lot as far as 
sequel era factions for X-Wing miniatures, first edition. Now looking at second edition, since they're relaunching them as their own factions, they need some help being filled out. And I think Star Wars Resistance, if it does nothing else, will do that. And so we are going to talk a little bit about these ships. Now, this could almost be an OSIS Academy episode. Maybe I'll just insert the music right here for all of five seconds. But we'll talk about uh, some of the new I don't think ships. we're going to go quite that in-depth. <laughs> no, no, we're not. Um, but we are going to talk a little bit about some of the ships. There's not a ton of info on them yet. Like, we haven't been given any sort of you know, deep dive technical guide to any of these yet, um, I'm, which I'm a little surprised about. I, I can't imagine there's a whole lot of uh, surprises in store for us as far as the the technical aspects go. This seems like the kind of thing that they would have released, like uh, not a, uh, you know, a, a, an encyclopedia guide, a visual guide for, but some sort of book like the technical manual of the resistance on the Colossus, whatever, whatever. But let's start with the obvious one. And that's the X-Wing T-85. It was cool to finally get to see those. I mean, cause they had been, they had been mentioned in other sources before, um, that the Republic had the T-85s. Um, but we, never knew how they were different from the T-70s. Mm-hmm. So now we've finally wow. seen it, and... Yeah, they're very angular. Yeah, I mean, as if X-Wings weren't already angular. This one is very much so. This one has a, a very, I don't know what you'd call it, like, I don't want to say a sci-fi look to it, like quasi-futuristic, but it does have more of that kind of a look to it compared to... A classic X-Wing? I really don't know how to describe it aside from that. And angular. So yeah, like, do you... I guess we'll just talk about... Do you like the looks of it, first of all? Yeah, I thought it was it was cool. Um, it was... I actually... I think my favorite thing of it, it was the colors. Like, I like that kind of, like... Uh, sort of teal blue or whatever mm-hmm. that they had for those. But yeah, I mean, they've got the same kind of split wing and stuff, and uh, if you're the kind of person who doesn't like the the look of the T-70, you're, you're not going to like the look of the, T, uh, huh. the T-85 either. I mean, are there people that um, don't like the T-70? I don't know. There's some that who don't like the, the weird like split wing thing that they got going on. No. Oh, okay. But, you know, I guess that's their prerogative. Um, <laughs> I don't know. That dog fight was weird, though. I was I, I was going to say, that the most disappointing part of seeing the T-85 was the very weird dog fight. Yeah, so it's like we didn't get a good idea of the ship's capable, or we didn't really get to see much that the ship could do mm-hmm. um, based on uh, what we've seen so far. Yeah, really. At at this point, it just seems like it's a st- like as far as capabilities, it's an X wing. It's what you expect. Yeah. So I mean, I'm sure it's gonna have you know torpedoes and that kind of stuff. As for how it's gonna be different than the T seventy, um, you know, that wasn't really readily apparent from what we saw in the episode. And looking at first edition, uh, I I don't recall offhand what the major differences were in the the loadout between a T-65 and a T-70, aside from it had an extra upgrade slot, or upgrade type, on the 70. And it could do a barrel roll, if I'm remembering correctly? Yeah, but it, now yeah, they it, all had, it had extra maneuvers. Yeah. yeah. So, maybe it... Um, well, maybe it'll have even more maneuvers. I mean, it's still going to have shields. It's still going to have all the weapons, maybe a little bit better weapons, but is it, you know, it's going to be priced out of 
practical usage compared to a T70 if that's going to be standard for um, resistance. Oh, and of course, the T85 isn't even resistance. It's New Republic. Yeah, so, I mean, I I guess there's a chance we won't see it, but but we will. Yeah, I I, I would say that's a very good bet that, w- that we will see it. Uh, I mean, I hope we get to see more of it in the series, too. Although, uh, we're certainly going to see a lot more of literally everything else that we're going to mention other than the T-85. Uh, so, I mean, we'll we'll start with the obvious ones, the Aces Squadron. And most of these are similar in look to past ships, but they're not, like, based on anything as far as I can tell. Or as far as yeah, Wikipedia I, I, can tell, you know. I mean, with the the one exception is Black Ace, which seems to be, like, some sort of a modified TIE fighter. Mm-hmm. Um. Because, I mean, he's got little bits of, uh, like, it's got the TIE Fighter cockpit, but then it's got, like, these wings out in front. It it it, it looks very much like a Jedi Starfighter in terms of, like, silhouette. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it looks like it's um, actually maybe got, like, bits and pieces of, like, a U-wing or something on it. It's 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 hard to say exactly. Yeah, I'm I'm sure once we get to the episodes that feature each of the ace pilots, we'll we'll get the whole backstory on each of their ships too. But and the other thing is that these are all racers as well as uh combatant ships, combat ships. So they should yeah. move very well. They should be maneuverable. They should be very fast. How do, how do we show that in uh, in the game? I would guess that they are going to have a lot of, depending on the ships, a lot of these racers are probably going to have green uh, maneuvers for a lot of high-speed stuff. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, though, I kind of wonder, will these guys end up being, will these ace ships end up being resistance, or are they actually going to go for scum? I suppose it all depends on how the story ends up going. Mm -hmm. If these guys, you know, if some of these guys sort of end up working with Kaz in the resistance, or, or not. I don't know, it's not really clear what's going to happen there. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's always that possibility for sure. They they won't necessarily stay together as as a group if if one if Toradoza winds up joining the resistance as I mean everybody else is going to also. But I think it'd be cool if they and this just occurred to me if they gave a title to each of them because I mean obviously like with any other X wing miniatures ship you have just the plain Jane version but then you can give them like the named version. And I'd like to see them do something where, and I don't know how they do it with this system, but to give bonuses to having them fly together. Do they do anything well, like that currently? Well, I mean, there's the, you know, like the, uh, uh, what are they called? The, um, the aggressor, the IG-88. You know, oh, you get, yeah. you know, when they have the uh, title, they get to share abilities and stuff like that. Well, I guess, actually, I haven't looked at how they work here in uh, in 2.0 yet. But, but yeah, I mean, so, I mean, there could easily be something where uh, you have, you put, like, the Black Ace title on the ship, and then it says something, you know, about, like, you know, gets... Uh, such and such bonus for each other. I mean, I don't know how you'd word it, though, unless they were in some way... I mean, it could be done. I just can't think of, like, the exact wording off the top of my head. I don't know if that would necessarily be a thing. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I don't know. It's. I mean, we'll see how it plays out in the show, but, I mean, right now, they're all kind of, like... With the exception of when they're defending the ship from... Or, I mean, the... Uh, 
the station from when the uh, the the pirates attack. Otherwise, they all seem like you know they're all racing against each other. They're opponents, so mm-hmm. you would think that they'd be more antagonistic rather than getting bonuses for working with each other. Yeah, um, I I would actually I think it would actually be kind of interesting to see since because these are actually um, like almost all of these ace ships are all custom custom units Mm -hmm. so it would be interesting to see them not have a generic oh that's true too because there's some like i believe that you know like um if i remember right uh what's her face uh uh, sabine sabine's tie i believe has only unique named pilots for that ship oh yeah, yeah, I had completely forgotten about that. And yeah, so I think they could easily do... The thing is, is like, other than the actual pilot who pilots it on the show, who else are they going to have? I, d- mm-hmm. I don't know. Again, maybe that would be something that would that's going to come up later on in the series. But, I, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we end up having only... No, no generic pilots for these ships, just because they're all custom, unique racers. That would be interesting. So, if you were going to, if you were going to package a ship, and we're looking at several ships here that only had one, maybe two pilots tops, depending on how the story goes. But if you had very few pilot cards. Could you st- like t- to to just fill out the packaging to have it have enough stuff to make it worth the same price? Could you have a lot of special upgrades that you could essentially that would be included for that ship, like baked in for that since it's a custom ship? But then take those upgrade cards, those special upgrades, and put them on somebody else. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure we're gonna see. Lots of non-standard equipment show up in this show, too. Mm -hmm. Just one thing that I saw looking at Green Ace is that it's got lots of uh, sponsor logos all over it, like, you know, like a NASCAR would. Could have that be its own upgrade. Sponsor. Sponsor logos as an upgrade. And it would give you, I don't know, maybe... uh, extra points to work with since we don't since there's no money in the in the game have it be like uh, extra points i'm not sure yeah. what slot it would take up to to do that i don't know just a thought i don't know giving yourself well i mean it really wouldn't be i mean it would just as well i mean it would so you're saying it would basically be like a negative point upgrade yes like the um the A wing, where you drop the uh, what torpedo tube, but you get more points or something like that. Uh huh. The yeah the the retrofit card that That's they came the one. up with for that one. Yeah. And in fact, wasn't that uh, that was aces? That was rebel aces. There you go. Yeah. And you know, sadly, we we don't have many other details. On most of these, like we talked about the fact that Black Ace is a modified tie, which could be interesting. Green Ace has sponsors. Well, it's got uh, wings that can shift angles for maximum maneuverability while flying. Yeah, he looks his his looks very reminiscent of like a Caraxus. Oh, almost. Yeah. To me, anyways, that's what it reminds me of when I look at it. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, Yellow Ace. I didn't look at that one yet. Yellow Ace is very interesting. Oh, yeah. So that's the one that's flown by the the Keldor in the squad. And he apparently crashes his ship all the time. (laughs) Yes, because it's really complex to fly. Well, it's it's got all kinds of variable configurations. So the ship's like a freaking transformer or whatever. Sounds like... (laughs) Um, 
And now that would be way cool if they could actually do that in the mo- in the model. So that would pro- that'll probably be something sort of like, you know, like the S foils opening and closing, like they've added to to all, to all the X wings. Mm-hmm. You could have four or five different configurations for this one ship. Now that could be cool in the actual Especially model. Uh, well, I just meant as different condition cards that change its stats or abilities or whatever. That would be cool. Um, but, but yeah, if they can actually make the model go into all <laughs> these different configurations, well, I would be happy with that as well. Do they have any sort of uh, like a double face card where one side it's, it could be one config and you flip the card over and it'd be a different one? Do they have anything like that? I'm thinking... Of- yeah, like... Like the S foils, well, at okay, least that's in, what I was in, thinking of. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I actually haven't looked at the S foils cards in 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 second edition. Okay, but I'm assuming it's the same thing where you just flip the card over. Yeah, when it goes from open to closed. Yeah, I, I I think like I had that in the back of my head. Like I know this is a thing from somewhere, but I can't remember what it is. So that's exactly what I was thinking of. So I think that'd be pretty cool, since it's you know I would assume it doesn't have to you know park. To change config, it would do it mid-flight. Yeah. One would assume, anyways. That would be dumb if you would have to land (laughs) to change the configuration. Yes. Well, I'm assuming it it must, because, I mean, otherwise, why would he crash it all the time? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Blue Ace is really cool, and, of course, that's piloted by really the only Ace pilot we've gotten to see much of so far, Toradoza. Um and th- yeah, and this one is actually designed based off of some kind of, like, uh, what was it, a Lotus or race car? Yeah, it it has very race car looking curves to it. So it's probably modded the least, at least, you know, in terms of the, uh, the hull. It doesn't look like it has any fancy moving parts or anything. It just looks like a solid unit. Maybe it's got a lot of yeah. lot, it's got a lot under the hood. I'm sure. Oh yeah, and we haven't seen much for these ships' armaments other than um, just standard lasers on them. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and then there's also the fireball. I guess we should mention. <laughs> oh that's yeah, we Kaz's ship that's a big hunk of junk, almost blows up all the time. Yeah, which should be a game mechanic. Oh my gosh. Like you, <laughs> Yes. Like, you have to roll to see if you blow up or not. Well, I mean, all you would have to do like, is... Like, whenever they... If you do, a, like, a red maneuver, you have to see if you're... You have to roll to see if your engines crap out on you. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. You you do a red maneuver, roll damage die. Like, one. Roll one damage die each time to keep it fair. And if you get a crit, you draw the crit card and see what happens. Um, yeah, they, the only thing, they would just have to make him appropriately, uh, the, the ship cheap enough. Cause I mean, cause that's kind of the thing is with the show and the show, it's, it's, it's a hunk of junk, mm-hmm. um, that no one else wants to fly because it always blows up all the time on them. So, I mean, if they make it cheap enough to kind of offset the negative of possibly damaging yourself whenever you do, like, that red maneuver or whatever, it could work. Yeah, I I, I think even with that, you'd certainly be able to put enough mods on it to offset that, and then that would pump up the price to a normal ship. I think it's still be pretty good. I mean, it, it seems every bit as maneuverable and fast as the aces so i think it'd be fun i mean i think it'd be fun the first couple times that you play with it to be like oh am i gonna blow up this time but you know then as far as tournament viability i i doubt that would really go i guess you know what i didn't look up that uh with the third episode um the the uh da, 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 da. i can't even think of the guy's name now the guy that tried to befriend him and have you seen that one yet? Huh? Episode three. Well, you know, yeah, episode three. Well, or have you not seen that, it yet? Did it come out today? I thought it didn't come out till tomorrow. When did it come out? Um, I mean, I saw it on the Disney app. 
Uh, do, 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 do. Show me episode three. No, that's triple dark. Oh, yeah, because episode one was two episodes. I forgot. Episode four, I guess, technically. Fuel for the Fire. Yeah, I haven't seen that uh, one yet. Triple Dark was the last one I watched. Okay, because there's definitely uh, an upgrade waiting to be made in this episode, which, I mean, it's not it's not spoiling anything to say that in this instance, hyperfuel is used like NOS. And they just, um, like how in Solo, they added a drop of hyperfuel to the Falcon's engine to make it go. Someone decides to uh, use some hyperfuel in their uh, their racer. So I think hyperfuel is definitely going to be one of those probably scum-oriented, if it doesn't already exist, which it might... It might be a Falcon upgrade. It if it's not already, it's gonna be after this. Oh crap! This this character I'm re- referring to that I guess not everyone has seen yet is voiced by Elijah Wood. That's a thing. There you go. Yeah. Well, yeah, I remember seeing that he was gonna be on that episode or that he was voicing a character in that episode. But yeah, mm-hmm. I hadn't uh, hadn't actually watched it yet. And I, I think it's pretty good. It, uh, I think episodes, I'm just going to keep saying episode three, since as far as I'm concerned, the pilot episode is just one episode. So Triple Dark and Fuel for the Fire are exceedingly better than The Recruit. The Recruit was a not great first episode. I think the first episode of Rebels was much better, all things considered. In any event, I think if Hyperfuel is not already an upgrade, it better be. Um, do 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 do. So we talked about the aces. Not a lot to say. Talked about the fireball. Some interesting stuff there. Now let's get to some stuff that we can really talk about. And let's start with the lead pirate ship from Triple Dark, which is a modified can, Lambda shuttle. Can we really talk about it though? I mean, I mean, we can talk about it enough to say, hey, look. We're finally going to maybe sort of get a semi-official fox catch. Yeah, I mean, in the sense that it's a modified uh, Lambda, but that looks nothing like the fox catch. It, I mean, it does enough to say, oh, oh my, did they, uh, did they bring it back? I mean, I was going to like tweet about it, but I figured everyone else already had. You don't think it's pretty, uh, it's close enough? I don't. Oh, I, right. I guess I didn't get a fox catch vibe from when I watched. Oh, that's fair. I don't know. That, that's what I was feeling, at least. I thought you'd be all excited to talk about this. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's cool. I mean, it's <laughs> actually, actually, you know, when I first saw the stills of it, I thought it was like, I was like, man, that is one ugly ship and i hated it <laughs> and having seen it less so or well, more so once once it was in motion i didn't mind it as much but yeah i didn't care for it when i first saw the stills for that episode all right and i guess we didn't yeah. really get much of a feel for it in terms of what it can do again we don't have any sort of technical readouts for it but if it's if it's even close to lambda stats but better for scum that's pretty good i think that says that's a good thing to have um yeah it's definitely gonna be a scum ship um i wouldn't be and it he definitely seems like he's gonna be uh a regular antagonist on the show so so i'm sure we'll be seeing much more of his ship and some of the other pirates, too. There were some really interesting... Like, all the pirates were flying what I guess you would classify as uglies. But at least some of the guys... One guy was had the, like what looked like, to me, like a modified TIE striker, which was kind of a cool look to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think modified TIEs have some of the coolest looks. Even more so than, like, modified X-Wings. Not that we see a whole ton of those. But 
I don't know. It's, it seems like we can get more mileage out of uh, ties in different. Oh, I guess I guess time has shown us that ties in different configurations can go a long way. Since we've got three bazillion tie fighters throughout the ages. I think that's maybe an underestimation. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I was I was lowballing it. I didn't want to exaggerate too much. Um, but yeah, I I think, and I think it's gonna be interesting if they do roll those out too to get some official uh, uglies in the game, mm-hmm. rather than people, you know. Uh, chopping up their own models <laughs> like you um, yeah like me no i think getting uh actual official uglies i i'm 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 hoping anyways that we'll get to see these guys in the game i've wanted some uglies for a while now um but yeah it's just they've never really shown up outside of comic books before so mm-hmm. well and the last ship that I could think of that'd be really worth talking about is the red tie interceptor from the beginning of the very first episode and was it the end of Fuel for the Fire is when he gets back to uh, Starkiller Base? Spoilers? Uh, No, he gets back there at the end of the first episode oh was it okay or the pilot yeah i, I watched them in such um, but quick then, succession but then we see him but then we see him and phasma talking with the pirate dudes again ah, at the end okay of... that's what i was thinking of so i guess this uh this pilot's name is i, I guess we didn't really talk about the pilots for the aces really much either but uh elric von Reg, which uh, i'm just going to refer to him as uh, shaw the red comet because he totally is and his uh, his tie interceptor uh do correct me if i'm wrong but we didn't have any inter or yeah interceptors we didn't have any interceptors for first edition first order did we no okay so this is going to be yeah another entirely new ship for the first order which i think they need cuz yeah it's kind of slim pickings for uh, for just first order ships at the moment, and I I think this of all the ships that have been shown on the show so far, we got to get like the best idea of the combat capabilities of this one more so than any other one. I think. Oh yeah, like within however long that horrible dogfight was, two minutes, we saw a lot out of this guy. Yeah. Um. I mean, we saw, you know, it's got, he's got lasers, he's got some kind of uh, concussion missiles or torpedoes they, as well. They looked a lot like the ventral cannons, but I don't know if that was just how they wanted it to Yeah, look. no, they, sh- no they, they shot out of, um, yeah, the, the, the cannons, like, in between, uh, they shot out of, like, in between the little, like, notch. Mm-hmm. In the side of the interceptor wings, which wouldn't really be ventral. Oh, um, I mean, right, but I was just referring back to uh, on Force Awakens, because that's how they referred to them as fire the ventral cannons when they shot the the, the homing oh. missiles or whatever that actually hit um, Finn and Poe's TIE fighter. Okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um like they were the you're saying they looked like the same type of missile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure, but but yeah, it certainly was a fast ship as well. I mean, uh, which you expect since it's uh, a up supposed to be an upgraded version of the Tie Interceptor, and it's got a hyperdrive. Oh yes, hyperdrive. Not that that really matters much for this game, yeah, but. No. If it was a TIE Fighter computer game, it would matter. Yes. And I miss that game. <laughs> I know. I know. And I'm sure uh, Elric Von Reg will have a pretty high uh, 
rating. Uh, well, I guess um, I just I have not looked closely enough. I'm still thinking of in first edition terms, um, a pilot pilot ra- pilot rating value, whatever it is. Six is the highest now. Yeah. Man, that still seems weird to me. H- how does that feel when you're actually playing? Does it feel weird? Eh, not really. I mean, because the thing is, is back when you used to play, there's a whole there was a whole range of numbers. You know, kind of like those more middling numbers. I mean, you that you just never saw pilots at anyways. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this is just sort of like them getting rid of extraneous numbers <laughs> out of the system that they didn't need because nobody used them anyway. Yeah, I can see that. All right. So, yeah. So, I mean, you know, at first glance, you're kind of like, huh, really? But, mm-hmm. but yeah, when you stop and think about it, then it's it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. All right, so if uh, if we're saying that, uh, well, we, th- this is going to be a First Order ship, so we're going to have the First Order ties, the Special Forces tie, uh, this interceptor, uh, and Kylo's tie whatever is... I think that, is that the official name, the tie whatever? I'm pretty sure it is. I'm pretty sure that's what uh, Probably, because they were like... They were like, Kylo, what do you want to name it? He's like, whatever. <laughs> whatever. I don't care. It's like, we'll pick one. Whatever. Okay, great. We'll go with that one. That really would be a very, like, kylo you response. <laughs> I can just, I can see uh, if someone told Hux what he, had, what he had named it, the look on his face would just be, ugh, I would have called it the killer monster fish from space. I I'm, I'm sure a, that's a good name. <laughs> I'm sure if uh, if Hux had a had a ty- had a uh, a starfighter, it would be some gigantic, elaborate, overly long name that you know r- reflected his insecurities. What are you getting at here, man? That that Hux is insecure. I think Hux well, has. Well, I, I think like Hux your... has problems. <laughs> I mean, I I, okay. I I think he's the best character in in the world, but he's got problems. I'll agree with you there. <laughs> Great. No, I'm I'm on the side of all the people who think that uh, I mean, the first order is clearly a bunch of stable geniuses. <laughs> They're very fine people. Yes. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So as far as first order goes, I think that's all the ships that I can think of so far. To f- that is that is just for their side, not including any uh, imperial stuff. Yeah. Okay. And then resistance. They've got right now T seventy. They've got. Well, t- there's there's the they've got the YT thirteen hundred. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, they've got the Resistance Bomber. Okay, yeah, I couldn't remember if, if they had released that or not. Yep, and then they're going to be um, putting out the uh, the new A-Wing. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I, Here's I'm com- looking forward is, to that. Is coming out when the, uh, uh, when the conversion kits for those two uh, sides come out here later this year i think or they're supposed to come out sometime pretty soon is i q not... q in q4 here yeah so yeah well really we're in it anytime now <laughs> anytime now guys uh i lost my train of thought now You're fine. um did you did you mention kylo's shuttle because that's another one for the first order oh no i totally forgot about that yeah the the upsilon uh shuttle mm-hmm. is uh is also a first order ship, so they'll they'll have a you know a fair amount of ships when they. Lo- I mean, they'll have more than more variety than we got back when we just had X Wing Wave One. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, I'm just looking at the upcoming page right now, and they've got 
the two conversion kits and first order TIE fighter and T-70 and the RZ-2 A-wing. So, yeah, I think the only things that I bought for that were the Force Awakens core set. Yeah, I don't think I bought anything else for that. So I'm even further behind on that than I would be for scum. <laughs> well, I think that's it for ships from Resistance so far. We could check in in a few weeks, and if anything new pops up, certainly uh, add some or go back and say, oh no, Green Ace is the coolest ship ever, or Red Ace is where it's at. Yeah, I mean, there's stuff, there was, like, other stuff that doesn't really bear mentioning, like, like you know, they they rode on, like, this shuttle that they took, but, I mm-hmm. mean, pretty sure it was an unarmed shuttle, so it's like, obviously we're not going to have that in the game. Well, and, probably not, I guess. And speaking of shuttles, the uh, Nymoidian shuttle made a reappearance in... Uh, oh, the, uh, the Shethapede? Yeah. Cause we've... Yeah, I like... I like how he's like yelling when they're fixing it. He's yelling at them how it's an antique and stuff, and to be careful with it. Because that ship already exists via the uh, Phantom version two, right? Yes. Is it worth playing or? Oh yeah, lots of people play the Shethapede or did. Um, I don't know how much they are in two point oh now, but. So maybe another scum version. Possibly. It could happen. All right. Well, I think now that we're talking about shuttles, that means we've exhausted everything that we can possibly talk about. And granted, it's only three slash four episodes of Resistance so far. But, you know, I I think uh, I'm going to keep watching and we we shall see how things turn out, I, I guess. Yeah, I mean, so far, I kind of don't like it, but we'll see. (laughs) But if Joe were here, he would say, well, that's not surprising. Well, thanks for for being Joe for today. You're welcome. No, you know what? A lot of my dislike comes from really not liking the way the animation itself looks. I mean, it's just weird. Yes. Yes, it is. And it was pointed out to me the other day that since they don't really have any sort of outline to them, they're just sort of, you know, as far as cell shaded 3D characters go, they don't have any outline like you might see in a Telltale game, R.I.P. Uh, they When you look at them square on, they don't have any facial features, like their noses disappear. Well, I just hate stuff like everyone, everyone walks like... Like they're children who are just <laughs> learning how to walk, like and, and like seriously, and like their hand motions and stuff are so unnatural. Like all that stuff looks like it's from like a like a PlayStation One RPG cutscene. <laughs> You're not wrong, and it's uh, it just drives me nuts watching it. I can't, <laughs> I can't handle how dumb it all looks. And everything is like got this weird sort of like shiny glow to it. Like scenes like like the triple dark. It wasn't so bad because that whole episode like takes place in the dark. But like man, that first episode where it's all in the daylight the whole time, mm-hmm. I seriously kind of got a bit of a headache from watching it because it's all Ugh. so like weirdly lit and bright and glowy and i hate it (laughs) all right well there's leo's review i i think uh now i just want you to write a review i want you to type one up and just have it be that just i hate it i hate it i hate it i hate it well i mean i'm i'm willing to give the plot a chance like i'm hoping that that gets less stupid um (laughs) As time goes on. <laughs> yes. I th- I think that has great potential. But yeah, I, I don't I'm I don't think I'm ever gonna be a fan of the animation on this show. It's always gonna look like like ass. <laughs> well and again there I think could be a lot of improvement also. You look at 
Clone Wars, which I know you're not a fan of, but just comparing the animation of season one versus season uh, six, there's a pretty damn big difference. Yeah, but it's like, I mean, we've had Clone Wars. We've had Rebels. Now, what happened here? Like, did they fire all the people who worked on <laughs> either of those shows? That's a good point. And then... And then hire some kids right out of, like, high school. Like, this is their, sort of like their, um, they're actually, this is their animation, college animation classes they're taking. (laughs) I don't Um, know. So, yeah, I I don't like it. (laughs) All right, all right. Well, on that happy note, I think we're going to call this the end of an episode. So... Thank you for joining me, Leo, late at night on an off night. And uh, thanks to all listeners. Thanks to patrons. Thanks to everyone who comes and talks with us all the time on the Discord. I know we promote it a lot, but we do because it's pretty damn great. And we're there all the time. I always have it up either on my laptop or my phone or my desktop. We're We're just there all the time. And it's great. And it's not a toxic environment either, like so many other social media sites. You sound kind of like you're cult recruiting. I it's mean, just, we're there. It's, it's all the it's time, and it's great. so great. Yeah, Everyone's know, happy all the time. Come stay with us forever and ever and ever. Please. <laughs> yes, please. Don't forget the please. All right. We're out of here, everyone. We'll talk to you later on the next episode of the JotoCast. Hooray! Hooray? Hooray. Woo-hoo? Yep, that's right. (laughs) 